Okay, um, resume writing. I know it's not fun. It doesn't even come naturally. Let's face it, if you're like me, you were taught as a child, don't brag. Well, if you're looking for a job and trying to get an interview, and that's what the resume is designed to do, get you an interview, you have to brag. So what I tell people is writing a resume is so much easier if you know who's getting this resume, who you're writing to. So that's what we're gonna talk about first today. Then we're gonna, I think it's important that you understand how resumes are read. You might be surprised. And what do they want to know about you? What information is important to the employer or the recruiter? All right, so let's take a look at who is getting this resume. I can't say this often enough. Each resume should be written for one specific job at one particular company. So when you hear about targeted resumes, that's what people are talking about. Now, the worst thing you can do, the worst thing is to say to me, especially, I just want a generic resume that I can give to everybody. No, never do that. I mean, what you're saying is, I just want to put everything together on one paper and just let the employer pick and choose what's important. Well, first of all, it looks like a generic resume and every employer is going to think, number one, you're lazy because you are lazy. <laughs> I don't know of too many employers who are actively seeking lazy employees. So don't, don't do a generic resume. The other thing is you're asking the employer to work for you before you go to work for them. Does that make sense? No. So never, never say those words in front of me. Okay. If you know who's getting this resume, hopefully you've gone to ohiomeansjobs.com or you can use any, any website you like. Indeed.com is another good one. Um, find the job you're interested in. Hopefully it tells you where the job is, what company or what agency. And then writing the resume is much easier. And I'm all about making things easier. So. Immerse yourself in the job description. Look at the keywords. They're very important because you are not just writing to a person. You are writing to an applicant tracking system. That's software that scans every application, every resume for keywords. And what it does is it shows what a percentage of match you are to the job. So you want to be matched up highly because let's face it, most employers interview maybe five people for every job. So you have to be in the top five. So knowing how to do the resume is important. Understand the difference between required skills and experiences and preferred. Everybody has a wish list, but if it says you must have a certain skill or certain experience or training and you don't have it, my suggestion is do not apply for this job because maybe two weeks from now, they'll have a job you are qualified for. Well, if you've wasted their time once, they're gonna remember you. So only apply for jobs for which you are qualified and learn everything you can about the company. Look at their history. There are some fascinating stories about uh, uh, companies that in this area how they got started. Really, really interesting stories. They'll be good to know if you get an interview too. Look at their mission statement or their, um, they might call it the company philosophy. You can learn a lot about them there. Um, look at their recent news that they probably show on their website. Now, when you go to their website, you're looking at basically their resume. So they're not gonna tell you anything that puts them in a bad light. So you're also going to Google them, Google the company, Google the agency, and know that they're going to Google you as well. So clean up your social media, Google yourself, see what pops up easily. Employers do look, um, know their products or their services, their customers, their competitors. Here's a good tip. Like them on Facebook. If you follow a company on Facebook for a while, 
and hit like every once in a while, they're going to get to see your name before they ever get to see your resume. That can only help. And if you have a LinkedIn profile, and, and you should, LinkedIn, if you don't know about it, is sort of like Facebook for professionals. Um, if you have a good, strong LinkedIn profile, then look up people in this company on LinkedIn and connect with them. That, that's a smart move also. All right, here's creative millwork. Now look at the top left. They make grills, not the kind of grills you cook on, but grill work. And actually they, they made the, uh, they recreated the grill work for our library, our Asheville County District Library when they uh, refurbished everything. So they, they're a very good company, a local Ashtabula company. And what I love best about them is look down at the bottom and that blue bar. We are a service company that just happens to make grills. I love that. I love that. Mark Estock was one of the founders of the company. It's family owned and they're a good company to work for. And take a look, it says on the second paragraph, we will have a safe, fair and caring work environment, be environmentally sensitive, that resonates with me, and a good corporate neighbor. Now you want to work for companies who share your values. It's important that you research every company that you apply to. Now, how a resume is read. Not like a book, not top to bottom, left to right, no. You have five or six seconds to make an impression for that reader to decide if they're gonna continue reading or not. And if they decide not, they're on to the next one. I hear you, I hear you. You're saying, it took me four days to write this resume and somebody's gonna give me five seconds? Yeah, because you can read a lot in five seconds. In fact, let, let's try it. Go ahead and take six seconds and read this. Okay, now what it says is, it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are. The only important thing is that the first and last letter be at the right place. This is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. Now you could read that, you read most of that in just a few seconds. And the fact is an employer knows what he hopes to see and his or her eyes go to one place first to see it. Where is that? Top center. Now we're talking about the resume itself. So at the very top, you're gonna to give your contact information. So you're gonna give them your name, your address, phone number. Give them one phone number, not two one phone number where you are most likely to be able to answer, usually a person's cell phone. Now make certain that the voice message is professional. You don't want your children recording your voice message. Change it if that's what you have now. You don't want to say, yo, you know the drill. No. Make sure it's professional. Uh, no dogs barking in the background. Give them your email address. Many employees prefer to contact you by email. And again, if you have a strong LinkedIn profile, make sure you give them that address too. You want to drive them to your LinkedIn profile. Okay, now we're still at the top center and directly under your contact information, you're gonna describe yourself in about three sentences, a short paragraph, which is gonna be your career profile. So you wanna give them your job title, your years of experience, and some of your best accomplishments, your achievements. Now we're not gonna do objectives. Objectives are passe, and, and I don't know where objectives started anyway, because an objective focuses on what you want, and that's not where you're going with a resume. Your resume is all about what you have to offer the employer. And I've seen this objective over and over again, seeking a position with a stable company where my skills and experience will be recognized and awarded, rewarded. Okay, does that make any sense? You're, you're saying what you want, no. So 
You're going to show them not job duties, not responsibilities. Every employer knows the job duties and the responsibilities of a position. They know it. You're going to tell them why you were so awesome at it. So you're going to prove to them. And, and this is another thing. Employers, you're going to read this in many, many uh, job descriptions. Must be a team player, good communication skills, dependable. Now, if you put that on your resume, the way they look at that is, well, that's just your opinion. And it is just your opinion. If you say, I'm a great communicator. No, you don't have to say that. Communicate well in what information you put on your resume. They're going to know you're a good communicator. All right. So here's what it could look like. This is your contact information at the top. Now we're showing the top one third or one half of the first page. And you don't want anything longer than a two page resume. And most of us, let's face it, can get by with one page. If you get into page three, reviewers, recruiters, employers, they start to feel as though you don't respect their time. So keep it to one or two pages at the most. So there's your contact information. This one has, happens to be a, the career profile of a customer service professional. 12 years experience, they tell which um, in retail and healthcare. Now, if you're bilingual, tout that, show that. That's very important. I know it's hard sometimes to come up with numbers, but numbers really resonate. Um, if you can say you were promoted within a short period of time, there you go. Um, if you had any kind of distinction, maybe you were awarded, um, you were awarded employee of the month or attendance awards. Some companies give out attendance awards. Tell them how often you earn those. What does that say? I'm dependable. I show up. You can be the best worker in the world, but if you don't show up, of what value are you? So that, that's a good one. All right. Now the next place an employer looks is down the left side of page one, where they hope to see your chronological work history. I should say reverse chronological because you're going to start with your most recent job and go backwards in time, 10 years, uh, 15 years at the very most. Let's face it, 15 years ago, we all worked differently than we do today. Um, so again, you're going to tell them your achievements, your accomplishments for each of your jobs. They're very interested in where you worked. Then they want to know what position or positions you held. And make certain you give them month and year start date to month and year end date. Now, I had someone one time, and employers are wise. Somebody I was helping with a resume, they said, I started in 2019 and ended in 2020. I said, okay, what month in 2019? Um, December. And you, your job ended when? In 2020? January. I said, okay, you started in December and you ended in January. Yeah, that's being deceptive. That's why employers want month and year to month and year. All right. Now, where does your education belong? At the bottom. And, you know, the end of page one or the middle or end of page two. And, you know, you're saying, well, I spent a lot of money on my education. Yes, you did. But experience usually trumps education, except in certain fields. Um, but don't worry. Employers will find your education. If it's important, they know where to look and they'll find it. Now, finally, where can you get help to fine tune your resume? At the Ohio Means Job Center. We're at 2247 Lake Avenue in Ashtabula. I'm the resource room attendant, so I usually am the one to help people. I'm not the only one, but I'm there to help you. Um, we're not open at the moment. As soon as it's safe, we'll be pleased to open up again, but I can certainly help you electronically in the meantime. So. Don't hesitate to call us. My direct line is 440-994-2511. And it was a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you.